NoDQ.com. 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 Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to episode number 946 of No DQ and A video, right here on the newly updated NoDQ.com, as you can see with the new logo, the new intro for the video. Also, still on YouTube, despite all of the recent controversy regarding YouTube, I will be discussing both the changes to NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube situation at the end of the video. For now, I want to cover the main purpose of what this video is about and that's your questions. Now the big topic which just broke as I was starting to record this video, the unfortunate death of former WWE superstar Rosie, part of the three minute warning tag team as well as the team with Shane Hurricane Helms. Very tragic, only 47 years old. Of course, the brother of Roman Reigns, and that leads me to the first question today, which comes from Chris. Hey Aaron, with the passing of Rosie, would fans show sympathy towards Roman going forward? I doubt long term the fans will all of a sudden be sympathetic towards Roman Reigns, but I'm hopeful that at least in the short term, fans will be respectful to Reigns on social media and not give him such a hard time. He has to be totally devastated about the death of his brother and for fans to leave disrespectful comments and insulting him. Right now, it's not necessary. Be respectful, be courteous to him, and give wrestling fans some respect overall. Let wrestling fans be seen as a group of people that can show respect and just for a few days at least or a few weeks or whatever, not get on the guy's case. You know, he's playing a character on TV, but this is a real person we're talking about that just lost his brother. Show some respect. You're representing all wrestling fans and it would be nice if the wrestling community as a whole got together and paid their respects and refrained from ranting and tweeting nasty messages towards Roman Reigns, hey, I hate your character, you suck, and all that stuff. There's a time and a place for that. Now is not the time. So yes, I am hopeful, at least in the short term, fans be respectful. And when a fan buys a ticket to a WWE show, they have the right to cheer and boo the characters however they want. I'm guessing WWE will do some sort of tribute on Raw since Rosie was a fairly big star in WWE for a couple of years and of course he is the brother of Roman Reigns. You would think WWE will pay some sort of tribute to him and of course the Samoan bloodline. I think at least for one week fans might back off on the negative Roman Reigns reactions on Raw so if he does appear on Raw on Monday he might get a better reaction than usual but I think over the next couple of weeks, things will go back to normal. My concern is fans just being disrespectful to him on Twitter right now when it's not an appropriate time at all. Got this one here from Yusuf. Should Strowman be the guy? His segments hit big numbers on YouTube. So a lot of people have been asking me about the segment on Raw with Braun Strowman and the Big Show with the ring breaking and that segment obviously was a big hit on YouTube and on social media in general. I love the segment. I thought it was really well done. I, I love the part where the referee got knocked out of the ring. I mean, poor John Cone. He really took a fall out there, but it, it added to the segment. And somebody asked me which was the best segment of the three. Of course, the original segment is hard to top. Anything that's considered a copycat is usually not considered as good as the original segment. What I did like about this particular segment, besides the bump that John Cone took, was the fact that Strowman actually got up at the end. I like that. I like the fact that Strowman was standing on his feet and standing tall. Nobody else in those previous segments got up at the end of the segment. So it does add to this idea that Strowman is this 
unstoppable monster. The fact that he was able to get up from all the carnage with the ring collapsing and everything. I, I really enjoyed the segment. Now, regarding Strowman and his push going forward, I, I think that this guy has a lot of potential. He's getting better with every passing week in the ring. And for a guy his size, he moves really well. And he, he's a very good worker. So I, I could see Braun Strowman becoming a major superstar in WWE. And it, it certainly looks like they are grooming him for Brock Lesnar. And I know WWE wants to have Roman Reigns beat Brock Lesnar and be the guy to beat the guy that ended the streak and all that. But I say have Braun Strowman do it. I mean, I'm almost feeling like at this point, WWE should have Braun Strowman beat Brock Lesnar and establish Braun Strowman as a major superstar. I feel like the guy's momentum is growing on a weekly basis, and he could be a major superstar in WWE for years to come. He could be the next Undertaker-type character moving forward, or even the next Big Show-type character for many years to come. If WWE plays their cards right, he could definitely be bigger than the Big Show. Just because people people see him as a giant. He has the credibility right now, and the legend of Braun Strowman is growing on a weekly basis. So we'll see if WWE can really continue to keep the momentum going, or if they will just have him lose to Brock Lesnar, or even worse, lose to Roman Reigns before facing Brock Lesnar and then all that momentum is really lost. You know, it's all about the illusion, and right now, the illusion is he is a bona fide monster. This one comes from I Say Whatever 666 regular contributor. Why does Alberto El Patron continue to attack Triple H? He's not in the effing company anymore. What's the deal? I am not Alberto El Patron, so I cannot speak for him. I am not sure what he is thinking or what is going through his mind. If it was me, I would keep my mouth shut. I would be concerned about my reputation and how people see me. I think by continuing to rant on Triple H, he's coming off as bitter. Now, is that what is going on? Is he frustrated? and he feels like he needs to keep his name in the headlines? Possibly. Is he trying to get Paige fired? Possibly. Who knows? I'm not really sure what the deal is. It could be a combination of everything. Maybe he thinks by ripping into Triple H, he will gain respect from Triple H in some weird way. I'm not really sure what he is thinking. It is possible that he's just reacting out of emotion. He might just be an emotional guy and he's making a mistake by publicly ranting on Triple H. We see people do it all the time. People go on Facebook and they leave negative comments all the time and they rant on people without really thinking about things. You know, I think people need to use discretion. And I think El Patron is damaging his brand and his reputation by speaking out and continuing to rant on Triple H. That's my opinion on it. Who knows what his true motivations are? We really don't know. He's the only guy that knows. This one comes from Trump the Great. First time asker. I know it's no time soon, but after a short feud with Cass, do you see Enzo joining 205 Live once they split? That is an option. However, Enzo isn't really known for his cruiserweight abilities. He's not really seen at the level of in-ring performer as those guys in the cruiserweight division. Enzo's real strength is his verbal skills, his ability to talk. So what do you do with Enzo once the team with Cass is broken up? I think, honestly, he would be better off as a manager than being part of the cruiserweight division. I think he would not be able to hold his own with the other cruiserweights. I mean, in terms of the charisma department, he outshines pretty much everyone. Maybe Austin Aries is the one exception. But I think he would struggle in the cruiserweight division. I think that that would be a step down for him. I think WWE needs to figure out something for him after the tag team. He's got so much potential in terms of the verbal skills and the overall presence and charisma. I just feel like that team should not be splitting up anytime soon. 
at least for now, keep them together as a tag team. And with the time you have, think about a long-term plan for Enzo after the team is broken up. I think just throwing him into the cruiserweight division would be very lazy and would possibly lead to the end of his career where he goes nowhere and then the company just cuts him loose, which would be a real shame because there's so much potential with the guy in terms of his character and, and how good he is on the mic. Got this one here from Mohai Hamed or Ahmed. Looking at the current women's division, do you think we'll ever see a women's Royal Rumble match? I believe I've answered this question before, but I'll go ahead and answer it again. So if you guys are wondering, hopefully this answers your question and I will not get this question again. To sum it up, I doubt it will happen because Royal Rumble is a once a year event. I think doing more than one Royal Rumble a year would water it down. And the Royal Rumble is one of those really special things about WWE because it only happens once a year. And I doubt WWE is going to mess with a winning formula. The Royal Rumble match every year is 30 men with the winner going on to WrestleMania. That has been the tradition. Yes, traditions are often broken, but first of all, I do not even think there's 30 women to do a, a women's Royal Rumble match. So I think that right there rules out the possibility of WWE doing a women's Royal Rumble match. I, I think it's almost zero chance that WWE would do a, a 30 women Royal Rumble and then leave the men out of it completely. And I think two Royal Rumbles is too much. I think you stick to one. And I just think realistically, it's probably not going to happen. So hopefully that answers your question and that will be the last time I get that question. This one comes from Mr. Yuck. While meshing well lately, how long do you see Sheamus and Cesaro lasting as a team and will they rival after a split? I see no point in breaking those guys up, and we already saw Sheamus versus Cesaro. I'm not really interested in seeing that match again. So I'd rather see them break up by some other means than them just having a falling out, like being drafted to different brands. But we just had the Superstar shakeup, and I would keep them as a tag team for the long haul. I think they're doing well. There's no need to break them up. I like the team. I like the fact that they're on the same page now. You know, the whole odd couple thing got played out. And I, I think it's good. I think it's a good act. So I would keep them as a tag team for now. No need to split them up. I'd rather see them split up just by them randomly splitting up rather than them feuding again. I'm not a fan of seeing them feud again. I want them, once they split up, to stay as far away from each other as possible. Not interested in seeing them fighting again. This one comes from Mr. Wonderful, not Paul Orndorff, I'm assuming. Do you think Finn Balor got pushed way too quickly to the main event scene when he debuted? Not at all. I would have done the same exact thing. Finn Balor had the star power in NXT. He had the in-ring abilities. He had the look with the demon character, the entrance, the music, all that stuff. To me, that was money. I talked about this for months, that this guy has some real potential to be a major star in WWE. I would have done the same exact thing pushing him and making him the first Universal Champion. WWE needs to make new stars. And Finn Balor was a great choice to push right away and try to make him a big star with the mainstream audience and make the money. I was definitely a fan of that. Unfortunately, he got hurt and that halted his momentum. Hopefully, he'll be able to regain it back. I would definitely continue to push him strong. And if he stays healthy, I think he'll be a major star in WWE for years to come. This one comes from Sean T. Flick. After the shakeup, could you see the Sasha heel turn being held off now and Bailey versus Banks taking place at WrestleMania? I think it's way too long to do that feud. It feels like things have really been starting to build up and the, the storyline is starting to get heated between the two of them. We had Sasha coming out and basically challenging Bailey on Raw. I think that by waiting too long, you risk people losing interest in the storyline. I think, as the saying goes, you need to strike the iron when it's hot. And I would, I would set up the Sasha heel turn fairly soon. Maybe WWE is going to do the Alexa Bliss Bailey storyline for now, but by SummerSlam. 
I would really consider going with that match. I think SummerSlam would be a good time frame to do Sasha Banks versus Bayley. That's my opinion, at least. I think WWE should do it sooner rather than later. All right, that will wrap it up for the Q&A portion of No DQ and a video. Now, there are a few things I would like to discuss, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. First off, the changes to NoDQ.com, new logo, new intro for the videos, updated look to the website. I would like to thank everyone for their feedback. Overwhelmingly positive, a few negative reactions, but you cannot please everybody. I feel that the site does give people an overall better user experience. There are also comments on NoDQ.com, comment sections. You can leave comments at the bottom of every page. I figured I would do something for episode number 950 to get people active in the comment section. If you are among the top 10 comment submitters, I guarantee your question will be answered on episode number 950 of No DQ and A video. So go on the site, leave some comments. Please do not spam. Please use some discretion and come up with some creative, well thought out comments to leave. But if you're among the top 10 comment submitters, I will definitely answer one of your questions on the 950th edition of No DQ and A video, which will be an extended edition of the show. Now, regarding No DQ and A video and YouTube, many of you have heard the story by now, the situation with YouTube and the advertisers, a lot of advertisers pulling out of YouTube, and as a result, most YouTube publishers, including myself, have seen a significant decline in ad revenue. Now, as you guys know, NoDQ.com is my business. The YouTube channel is part of my business. Fortunately, it's only a portion of the business, but I have definitely taken a hit. How am I going to proceed in the future? Well, for one thing, I will continue to be doing videos on YouTube. That will not stop completely. Now, I've thought about possibilities. I've thought about maybe doing shorter videos on YouTube and having longer videos on the website. You go on the website and you can watch the full length videos. I was thinking of doing something like that. I thought about going the route of charging people for videos, but I know that whole thing backfired with what culture and that generated all that controversy. I know fans. I know fans do not really want to pay for something they can get for free and you guys have been watching the videos for free for so long. I'm sure some people would buy the videos, but I really do not want to go down that route. I would prefer to make all the content free. So I'm thinking, worst case scenario, I will upload short editions of NoD Q&A video with the full versions being on the website. But for now, I'm going to try and ride out the storm and see if the revenue starts going back up. I'm gonna give it a few weeks and see what happens, but leave a comment. I'm interested in your thoughts on the situation and um, what you think would be a good idea. Leave a comment. And again, thank you guys for your support, your continued support of No DQ and A video as well as NoDQ.com. And by the way, there will be new t-shirts coming up very shortly on Pro Wrestling Tees with the new logo. So stay tuned for all that and I have to change that logo. I haven't gone around to it yet, just been busy with other stuff, but um, Soon I will be making a few other visual changes to the videos. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time.